So, now we will consider the Kalman filter which is uh, the one we discussed at the end of the previous lecture. The Kalman filter is a, uh, is a, a recursive algorithm for predicting the uh, for uh, estimating the state of a, of a system that is evolving linearly uh, uh, with, with and powered by Gaussian noise and for which we get observations that are also a linear function of the state and with a, a, a uh, dis, uh, corrupted by uh, corrupted by Gaussian noise. The, so, the system here is as follows. So, we have here x k plus 1 which is given as a, a k x k plus f k u k plus w k the and we get observations at any time k as c k x k plus g k u k plus v k. Now, what we will assume here is uh, so these uh, the x's and uh, y's are vectors here. So, let us assume your x k's are all in some r n, y's are all in suppose some r m for uh, uh, for example. The we have here u's the u k's here these are a known exogenous sequence. So, this is a known and exogenous sequence, exogenous sequence. So, whatever it is, it is a disturbance whose value we know. The w's and v's, these here, these are noise is comprised of noise. Now, we will assume unlike in the past we will now assume that they have a specific distribution. So, we will assume that the w k's are distributed normally with this distribution n 0 q k. Now, I will explain what this notation means. I will assume also that the v's are distributed in this as follows n 0 r k and uh, the initial x is distributed x 0 is distributed as uh, normal say x 0 hat and sigma 0. Now, what is this n, uh, n something something? Well, this is actually the Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution. Now, we want to write here x n x mu p this here denotes uh, the uh, the uh, the gaussian density evaluated at x having mean p uh, mean mu and variance p and covariance uh, matrix p so what is this given by so now suppose x here is uh, in rn suppose so if x is in rn then this density is given by 1 by square root of 2 pi the whole raise to n. Okay. So, it is uh, this times the determinant of p, the determinant of p, the square root of that absolute, absolute value of the determinant of p, square root of square root of that all right and uh, times the following exponential term. This is an exponential of minus half x minus mu transpose uh, p here inverse x minus mu. Right? Now, what is uh, uh, let's let's carefully look at this here so suppose so the so firstly notice that since x is a vector its mean mu is also a vector so consequently the this here is a vector so therefore i'm i'm taking a transpose of that vector multiplying it by a matrix and then i have another vector here 
So, this is this is a vector uh, this is so whatever I have here is now a, a scalar as a result. P B is my covariance matrix. So, this is my mean and this is the covariance. Covariance matrix is uh, uh, of, of if x is a random vector in R n then the covariance matrix is the expectation of x x transpose. This is the covariance this is the covariance matrix of x right. So, so the p here is the covariance matrix of my uh, corresponding to my distribution. So, p is uh, therefore also an n cross n matrix. Now, it turns out that p is also a, a positive semi definite matrix and in fact, if, if this distribution is non degenerate then in fact, it will be a positive definite matrix. Then in, in as a result of that the determinant is actually always going to be a positive quantity. So, the way that uh, the, the covariance matrix appears is that it appears here in, uh, in, this, determ uh, in this determinant here whose determinant is being taken and it also appears out here. The dimension the way it appears is it explicitly actually comes up here it, it appears as a the uh, as a power of the square root of 2 pi all right in the denominator out here. So, this is your distribution this is the Gaussian distribution evaluated at. So, this is the Gaussian distribution. in n dimensions so of the n dimensional gaussians right it's the gaussian distribution in n dimensions with mean mu and covariance sigma or covariance p sorry All right so what we are assuming about the noise of the of the uh, uh, in our system here is that we they, the noise here in both cases the system noise as well as the observation noise is is has mean 0. So, these are 0 the covariance matrices here are q k and r k the the system starts from um, uh, again a uh, uh, and the noise is Gaussian in both cases the the system starts from a state x 0 which is drawn according to this distribution with mean x hat 0 and a covariance sigma 0. Right. Now, the way uh, what we are looking for once again uh, is a filter that means we want to do this we want to estimate x uh, we want to uh, find a way of recursively estimating x k given k right. So, this our goal here is to recursively estimate this or more generally uh, we actually want to estimate this recursively. Now, the, the way to do this is uh, it turns out is, is a simple application of the previous uh, of the previous uh, uh, theorem that we have which was which is in which we had used in which we had uh, used Bayes rule to compute this particular uh, updated distribution. But it is it is a little more than just that because there is a lot of underlying structure in the solution which gives us a lot of insight into how into our understanding of how how the, uh, the 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 new distribution is being derived from the old distribution in a sense this this uh, this this process of updating one's uh, updating the distribution is really about updating the the the, uh, the belief about a particular event or a particular state as we give as the state keeps changing and as the observations as uh, fresh observations keep coming. So, this this that is what this particular uh, uh, this uh, this system is actually helping and this this particular filter is actually helping us do. So, uh, so the 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 beauty of the filter is really in 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 how it uh, in the in the underlying structure that it shows that it uh, clarifies about how the update of uh, how the update of beliefs need to happen. Right. So, this filter is is uh, given by is it was discovered by uh, by Rudolf Kalman. and is one of uh, one of the most pretty results in in uh, in in the theory of control 
all right. So, now before we actually derive this let us derive a uh, let us actually derive an uh, let us actually make note of an auxiliary result and uh, that result is actually this following simple observation ok. So, we so let me we say x and y are jointly Gaussian. If a x plus b y is Gaussian for all scalars a comma b. So, we say x and y are jointly Gaussian if a x plus b y is is Gaussian for all scalars uh, for all scalars a, a and b. So, so it is it is not enough that they are individually Gaussian they are they, they uh, so usually they when uh, when there are two random variables whose marginals are Gaussian it does not automatically make them jointly Gaussian they are jointly they, they are jointly Gaussian if every linear combination of those two variables is uh, is also uh, also is, is also a Gaussian random variable. Now, this uh, uh, a particular case in which uh, jointly Gaussian becomes equivalent uh, to uh, marginally uh, in equivalent to them being individually Gaussian is when the two are independent. So, if if x comma y are independent and independent Gaussian then they are also jointly Gaussian. Now, why do we need to think about jointly Gaussian random variables? Well, there's the reason we need to think of that is the following, following simple result. So, we have already seen that the conditional expectation of x given y, this here is the is the minimizer of this particular optimization right. So, it is the best estimate of of x when you are given y best estimate in the sense that the one that minimizes the mean squared error and we are minimize. So, if you minimize x minus a function of y f of y the mean square error between x and the function of y uh, the the conditional expectation of uh, the so the the ex and uh, so you if you minimize the expected squared error between x and the and a function of y over all possible functions f it turns out that the uh, the optimal f to choose is is this particular one on the left where you so you choose uh, f of y or f the optimal f star of y is in, in fact equal to the conditional expectation of x given y. This is something that we have already seen in one of our previous lectures. So, now what happens if x and y are jointly Gaussian? Now, if it turns out that if x and y are if x and y are jointly Gaussian if x comma y are jointly Gaussian. then it turns out that the conditional expectation of x given y is in fact a linear function of y. So, this is something this is something really beautiful and elegant that happens when we are when we have when we are considering jointly Gaussian random variables. So, you take two uh, random variables who are, that are jointly Gaussian and you want to estimate one from the other it turns out that the best thing that one can do is to do a linear transformation of the given of the given information. So, this the, the this linear transformation of course, depends on the joint statistics it depends on their joint covariance uh, on their cross covariance and so on and uh, and, and uh, is is a is is a fairly involved expression, but nonetheless the most important thing is it is linear in the observation. Notice that this this particular property is not true in general because a, a conditional expectation would involve a an integral and an integral over the posterior for that matter 
and the posterior involves uh, would uh, involves the prior and uh, and the observation channel uh, observation kernel all of this uh, usually may leads to a mess it is not that it there is no uh, there is no uh, guarantee that this would actually reduce to any simple expression. But in the case of jointly Gaussian random variable this is what we get we get that uh, expectation of x given y is a linear function of y. Now thanks to this linearity what happens is that the this this particular thing that we were looking to compute this boxed expression that we are looking to compute this actually becomes a, a significantly easier to compute. So, the so, this this becomes a uh, uh, the, this linear this linearity helps us helps reduce the complexity of this computation. Another co corollary of this linearity is is the following that remember y itself uh, since x and y are jointly Gaussian y itself is also Gaussian right you can always take you know a, a equal to 0 and b equal to 1 and we will get that y itself is also Gaussian. And expectation of x given y being a linear function of y is also a Gaussian. So, this is also a Gaussian. So, this is also a Gaussian random variable. So, consequently the best estimate of a, a Gaussian random variable given another Gaussian random variable is also itself a Gaussian random variable right. So, so consequently what we are getting here is this kind of a, a, a preservation of form that we start with a Gaussian random variable we are given information which is also Gaussian and then the best estimate of that then turns out it itself turns out to be Gaussian. So, this sort of suggests that that, uh, that there should be a, 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 a very elegant and simple way by which we should be able to uh, uh, use the, the, the new es the estimate that we have of a random variable in the in deriving a new estimate uh, in, in deriving a new estimate or an updated estimate. So, the things that we want to uh, that we that we need to do as far as uh, filtering is concerned which is to do prediction and measurement update these are things that we could potentially do rather elegantly because there is a preservation of form. Remember this is a lot in spirit of what we had seen also when we were looking when we were doing uh, when we were doing uh, uh, linear quadratic uh, problems where, where the quadratic nature of the problem continued to be preserved and that is why we could recursively keep computing the value function at each step without much without any blow up in complexity. Something similar is happening here uh, the, the exact nature in which they are similar needs uh, you know is, is, is uh, needs a little bit of elaboration which, uh, which, uh, which I am not going to do here. But intuitively do remember that something, something of the same nature is going on in this problem as well alright. So, now, so now let us let us see how this is this is going to be applicable to our this particular observation is going to be applicable to our problem. So, our problem has has a state which is uh, which is in this which is uh, uh, it is given in this sort of form and as a consequence of uh, of this of the linearity this the state at any time k can be given as a function of all the previous noise right all the previous noise up, uh, up until that time k and all these exogenous uh, uh, and all these exogenous inputs. So, in other words we can just put, plug in always the x k's as uh, the, uh, the x k's using this dynamical equation and as we keep back substituting we will keep accumulating sums in this noise. Remember we had done something similar also in our uh, in our uh, when we were looking at uh, one of our earlier problems. Uh, 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 when we were talking of uh, linear systems with partial state information right ok. So, so therefore, you can think of x k as so x k effectively is is linear function of x 0 which is the initial state and w 0 to w k right. So, uh, w k minus 1 I guess yeah. Uh, so, so the that is what that is uh, that is what x k would be. So, it is a linear function of all of these and because it is a linear function of all of these 
these remember are Gaussians and they are independent Gaussians, right. So, they are independent, ok, I forgot to mention that these are uh, noise and these are independent across time. So, these are all independent Gaussian random variables. So, consequently x k itself is also a Gaussian. So, these are independent Gaussian and consequently this is also Gaussian. Something similar can be written also for y k, y k itself can be again written as a linear function of x 0 w 0 to w k minus 1 uh, uh, and also v 0 to v 0 to v k right. So, as uh, thanks to that what we have is that this is the, the uh, now these are also again independent Gaussian in the same way and therefore, this here is also Gaussian y k is also Gaussian. So, now remember uh, since, uh, since uh, so, so, so in fact because these are all independent Gaussians this all of these x 1 till x k y 1 till y k these here this entire vector here is a jointly Gaussian vector. So, this is a jointly Gaussian vector why because if you take linear combinations of any of these vectors what you would end up getting is linear combinations of these of all this noise right and the linear combination of this noise all these noise vectors are uh, would be because they are by what I have written here if, if, if you have two independent random variables independent Gaussian random variables then they are also jointly Gaussian. So, therefore, as a consequence of that these are the, the these are also jointly Gaussian right. So, uh, hence uh, what we are getting here is uh, uh, what we are getting is that this here is a jointly Gaussian random vector. So, consequently when we do estimations like these, when we estimate x k given y 1 to y k, the result this here is going to be a linear function of y 1 to y k. So, we, so, when we make estimates of the kind that we are looking for in the filtering problem, this turns out to be a linear function of, uh, of whatever it is that. Uh, uh, whatever it is that we are conditioning on. So, so as uh, thanks to this we will now be able to actually up, uh, do a lot of our calculations linear, uh, cal calculations easily. Moreover, because it is a linear function of y 1 to y k and all the y 1 these are also Gau uh, are also uh, Gaussians themselves this here would also be Gaussian. And because this is Gaussian we will be able to describe its distribution and therefore, the distribution of the distribution of uh, x k given y 1 to y k distri this distribution which is really what we had denoted by pi k of x this can be described using only two parameters which is using its mean. and covariance. So, this here can be its distribution can be described using its mean and covariance. So, really the challenge for the uh, in designing the filter for Gaussian for, for a linear Gaussian system like the we have is really about updating updating this updating me these two updating the mean and covariance. covariance recursively. This is essentially our, 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 our challenge right. So, this is what we need to do uh, we, we have to come up with a way 
to now update the mean and variance uh, covariance recursively as we get fresh information. So, that is that is basically the essential idea behind the Kalman filter. So, the Kalman filter is given by a, a bunch of equations and you will see that they, they, they really all they are really doing is is you know do updating these two quantities in a in a recursive manner ok. So, we will see that uh, we will see the exact form of the filter in the next class.